I don't know about you, but I'm glad when it's time to go into the house of the Lord. I want to turn your attention to the book of Acts chapter 19, beginning in verse 17. Acts chapter 19, beginning in verse 17. Going to speak the message tonight, get revived and burn the garbage. Amen. I tell you, anybody remember the old days where we used to have the burn barrels out there? And the things we shouldn't have, we'd place in there and just burn it up regardless of the value of it. Uh, well, I'm telling you, we need to return to those days. Uh, the people of God need to get the junk out of their life that don't need to be there. Amen? Acts 19, beginning in verse 17. And this was known to all the Jews and the Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus. Uh, and fear fell on them all. Uh, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. Uh, and many who believed came. Notice the words, many who believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Uh, many of them also which used curious arts brought their books together and burned them before all men. Uh, and if they counted the price of them, found it 50,000 pieces of silver. In 2003, I believe that would have been close to $200,000 or more, if I'm not mistaken right there. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Uh, notice the word, the word of God grew and prevailed. Uh, the people need to grow in the Word of God. Amen. They need to allow the Word of God to grow in them and prevail over the things that shouldn't be there in their lives. Uh, we're going to speak to you tonight on get revived and burn the garbage at, and burn the garbage. Uh, Heavenly Father we come before you dear Lord tonight God and we ask for your anointing dear Lord uh, and we ask for you to just touch this speaker to give me the words to speak Lord. Uh, anoint the ears for the congregation to hear, Lord. Uh, let your spirit fall in this house. Uh, let your anointing flow in here tonight, Lord. Uh, Father, we ask you, Lord, to just touch, dear God, and move in a mighty way, Father, Lord. Uh, and Lord, we just give you the glory, dear God, the praise and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Uh, just to back up a little bit of the text, or uh, uh, back up towards about uh, verse 11, uh, we begin to see that God would bring forth special miracles by the hands of Paul who was sending out prayer cloths. Uh, then we go on down and see on the hills of this uh, we see the seven skuns of Scavia try to use the name of Jesus and to cast out devils uh, but only to get whipped by the devils uh, and, 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 and to lead them fleeing and naked from the house uh, naked and wounded. Uh, then all of a sudden we begin to see a great revival break loose in Ephesus. Uh, we begin to see a revival that would happen right there. Uh, and you say, what kind of revival do we need just like in Ephesus? Uh, one of the first things I see is uh, we need the fear of God to fall back in our sanctuaries again. Amen? Uh, we need people to get a reverence for God again. Uh, we need get a people that's got the fear of God upon all of them. Uh, in verse 17, the Bible says right there, and fear fell on them all. Oh, no wonder look what they just seen happen right there. No wonder they just seen the sons of Scavia get whipped by the devils right then and there. And all of a sudden the Bible says fear, great fear 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 fell on them all it reminds me back in Acts chapter 5 when Ananias and Sapphira were struck down for lying to the Holy Ghost Acts 5 and 11 tells us in great fear came upon the church and then upon as many as heard these things if there's anything that's been lost in our modern church world and among many believers is the fear of God amen people don't have the reverence for God the respect for God like they once did. I don't know about you, but we need to get that fear of God back into us again. Amen. We need to get the fear of God placed back inside of the churches again. Ain't it something people will laugh at them cut taking the name of God in vain? When's the last time you feared God? Amen. Let me tell you how you use that name when you use his name. You use it with respect and you use it with reference. Amen. But people don't fear God no more. Uh, people don't fear God. Uh, instead they triffle with the name of Jesus. Uh, they knew, Ephesus knew that the name of Jesus shouldn't be triffled with. Uh, what does that word triffle means? Uh, it means without, uh, it means we're not taken serious uh, and 
said ain't no respect. I, unfortunately, many today just treat the name of Jesus like any other name. I, but I want you to know his name's far beyond any other name. Amen. I, I want you to know he's a name you shouldn't be playing with today. I, I want you to know when you call on his name, you use it with respect and you use it with honor. Amen. God help us have a revival when you get with the fear of God to fall in our houses again. Lord, help us to get the respect for God and the things of God like we once had. Amen. God, help the church. Don't expect it from the world because it's got the first begin in the house of God. Amen. The people of God need to get the respect for God and the fear of God once they once had and understand the name of Jesus ain't a name to just be played around with. The name of Jesus ain't just another name. But when you speak the name of Jesus, you're talking about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You're talking about the Alpha, the Omega. You're talking about the Great I Am. You're talking about the Healer. You're talking about the Deliverer. You're talking about the Baptizer. You're talking about the King. You're talking about the Son of God. You're talking about God Himself. But people ain't got no fear of God. People don't. They fear everything else but God. Amen. They fear everything but Him. They fear their bosses more than God. Amen. They fear man more than Jesus. Amen. They fear man and everything else more than what the Lord. I don't know about you. Instead of some of these people, they're fearing North Korea. Let me tell you, you need to quit fearing North Korea and just start fearing Jesus. You need to quit fearing ISIS and start near fearing Jesus. Amen? You need to quit fearing man and all these things of the world and just put your respect and your reverence where it needs to be. It needs to be honored towards God. Amen? The way we treat God. Amen? I'm telling you, we need a revival of the fear of the Lord to invade the camp of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, it's going somewhere tonight. People ain't got a fear of the Lord. Look at the things they set before them. Amen. Look at the things they set beside of them. Amen. Look at the things they listen to. And look at the things they celebrate. Amen. Amen. I'm going to go ahead and hit this tonight. I don't believe in dressing up like witches, ghosts, and goblins. The only ghost that resides in this house is, is the Holy Ghost. Amen. I don't believe in listening to ACDC. Amen. I believe in listening to some good gospel music. Amen. Something that would uplift Jesus. Listen, I'm telling you today. Oh, don't even get me started on some things. Don't even get me started on some of the symbols they bring around. I'm going to hit it. Get mad, get glad, don't matter. But anybody ever seen a peace symbol? Anybody have an idea what that means? Look at it. It's a sign of the occult, of the power of the cross that was broken. I don't do that. I celebrate that cross. There's your symbol a piece right there. I'm telling you tonight I'm on it because the garbage needs to get burned. God help you if you bring Harry Potter in the house. Oh, I'm going to get everybody. Don't worry. I've got myself a few times. I'll throw the rocks on my own toes. Understand, I get this from heaven before it gets here. Hey Amen. I'm telling you. People have lost the fear of God. Look, they'll take, they'll use the, I ain't even going to say it. They'll use the emblem or OM something. They'll use the letter of God right there and not use it with respect. See, fear fell upon the church. I guarantee when they seen this, they knew the name Jesus wasn't to be trampled with. They knew the name Jesus shouldn't be messed with anymore. You see, people would treat this Bible with respect like they did. Their things would be in a whole lot better shape. 
if the people of God would get hungry for this, like they did the things of this world, we'd be in a whole lot better condition. Amen? But I'm telling you tonight, people don't have the fear of God. Listen what they say, and people are playing around. They're monkeying around with their soul tonight. I'm sad to say it's not only in the world, but many of the churches have become nothing more than a nightclub mentality. Amen? They got the smoke machines. They got the fog machines. They got the lights. I don't need none of that. Not when I get the Shekinah glory of the Holy Ghost tonight. Did you hear me tonight? Did you hear me? I don't need none of this mentality. I got the Shekinah glory to come down. Oh, this ain't the kind. Glad you're clapping. Amen. Because I'm telling you, it's time for great fear to fall on the church. When we walk before the Lord, we don't walk loosely. We walk reverently. Amen. We walk fearfully before him. Remember what Jesus said? He said, fear not the one that can kill the body. He said, you fear the one that can kill your body and cast your soul into hell. Amen? What he was saying, you better walk fearfully before him. Don't worry about none of these others. Let me tell you, saint of God, don't fear ISIS tonight. Don't fear North Korea tonight. Amen? Let me tell you, the one you better fear, the one this nation better fear is the Lord God. God Jehovah tonight. Great fear fell on him. Cast your soul into hell. Proverbs 3 and 7 says, Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. That's what he says. The Bible says, Give no place to the devil, don't it? Set no evil thing before you. Hey, man, I get, a, I get a kick out of these people that call themselves Christians but have no problem watching a homosexual TV show. Did you hear me? And just chuckle at it. Oh, she does such a great thing. She's promoting an abomination. Hey, man, some of the music that goes to boom, 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 boom. Don't call it grunt music at all. I'll give you a rap. My name's Jimmy. And I'll take all you'll give me. <laughs> Somebody come up with that in North Carolina. That's a good rhyme. Say, I'm not a rapper. I ain't a singer. But when you get 100 people in here, I'll get on the roof. Amen. And I'll sing any song that's got to lift up Jesus for you. Listen what I'm telling you. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Amen. People don't got to fear God. Amen. They celebrate everything else. They fear everything else. They fear what somebody else has got to say about them. Amen. We fear what man's got to say about us more than what God's got to say about us. Ask you what church you belong to. I'm Pentecostal, Church of God. Don't get like that. Tell them you're Pentecostal and you're proud of it. I ain't ashamed of Pentecost. I want to wear the label again being a holy roller. Anybody else know what I'm talking about? I want to have the label of being a holy roller. I want them to know in this county that we're some holy rollers up here because I'm going to roll into heaven while they're stumbling into hell. Amen. I'm telling you tonight, it, we used to have that. Pentecostals used to be known as chandelier hangers. Amen. Holy rollers. That's right. You get a touch of God, you'll be jumping the aisles too. Amen. You'll be rolling down. But we fear what man's got to say more than what God's saying. Get that out. Don't worry about it. What man's got to say. Last I seen, I don't have to stand before man on the last day. The only one I got to stand before is him. Amen. Preacher ain't going to be there with you. Nobody else is going to be there, you and God. Amen. Can I tell you, we need to get a revival of repentance to sweep the house of God. It cannot go into the world until it first begins in the house of the Lord. Judgment begins in the house of God. Verse 19, 18 and 19. And many who believe came 
and confessed and showed their deeds. Many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them, found it 50,000 pieces of silver. My Lord, notice the word, many who believed came and confessed. Oh, God, help us. I wonder what would happen tonight if half the church world would come and confess their deeds before God. What are you saying tonight? I'm saying the church world is in need of repentance. Oh, God, help us. You say, well, I don't bring witchcraft books in. Well, let me ask you. I'll get you a few things here. There's some things the people of God need to repent over. Amen. But let me tell you, if we let me tell you, if you think we're going to have the nation being fixed in D.C., it's not supposed to start in D.C. Did you hear me? Thank God we got somebody down there that's got a little morality now. But let me tell you, it ain't going to start in the White House. It's not going to start in the Supreme Court. It's not going to start in Congress. It first must begin among God's people. In Second Chronicles 7. 7 and 14, if my people which are called by my name, listen, which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Notice that word, turn from their wicked ways. Then I will, I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. But until then, God's got a deaf ear to them. Amen. Did you hear me? Until then, God would have a deaf ear until they would repent and turn from their wicked ways. You say, what does the church need to be repent of? How many know many have forsaken the ways of God because they're more influenced by the culture of this world instead of the word of God. We're more dictated about popularity than we are the word of God. I got news for you. I didn't come from Pennsylvania, North Carolina to Pennsylvania to win a popularity contest. Amen. I came from North Carolina to Pennsylvania to be the mouthpiece of the Lord tonight. Amen. To preach what is acceptable unto the Lord God Jehovah. We have forsaken the ways of God. We have gotten away from the ways of God and gotten involved with the culture of this world. God forgive us. We forgot. Forgive. I'm getting ready to hit one. If you wasn't here Wednesday night, go on Spreaker and listen to it. Unfaithfulness. I told you Wednesday night, I have never seen a generation that professes the love of Christ but yet did not want to attend his house or open his book or get on their knees before him. Amen. If there's ever been a time where Laodicea is here, it is right now. We need to, for, we need to repent of that Laodicean way. We need to repent of that way that is bef- that, that lukewarm spirit that has gripped the hearts of many inside of our t- church pews. Uh, t- we was talking to me, Sister Debbie was talking Friday. The reason that many churches have called off Sunday night and Wednesday night because the preacher simply don't want to preach. And I've never figured that out yet because this preacher likes to open his mouth. Amen. This preacher likes to speak the word of God. Amen. 
but listen they become too lazy because they can draw the same amount of money with one service as they can with three we've forgotten the way it's become more of a job than it has a calling amen God help us to get some preachers that are faithful amen whether there's one there or whether there's 500 there amen let me tell you in my time in North Carolina I preached the one as I did as you tonight amen if there was one that showed up let me tell you I would still speak the word of God because there was one there if there wasn't one I'd find me a dog and begin to preach to it amen anybody know what I'm saying God help us get away from the unfaithful ways the church needs to repent of the unfaithful ways not only that the toleration of sin I'm about ready to hit something never in my full life have I seen the old time path of holiness begin to tolerate some of the things that they do amen never, years ago you would never hear of the debate about alcohol in our Pentecostal circles but now it's there even in some of the mainline denominations, years ago, you wouldn't have thought it would have been a debate to same-sex marriage, but now they're bringing it in. Now you've got even some now that are getting to the point where they are blessing abortion. Hey man, God ain't blessing that mess. Can I tell you right now, God help us. Today we begin to tolerate sin. Amen. Can I tell you another one? How about silence? We need to repent of being silent. Amen. Can somebody say, anybody in here don't have a mouth on, the, on them? Do we got anybody in here that can't speak tonight? How many know God's got to got put you a trumpet on you? Remember what I preached this morning? He works through your lips. Hey Amen. How many know he wants you to open those lips? He wants you to speak out. I told you. Some of us has got bigger ones than the others, but we all got one. I can get both of my shoes in mine sometimes. <laughs> but God help us. The things that we tolerate. Amen. God help us for the church remaining silent. If the church would have never remained silent, prayer wouldn't have been took out of school. Abortion would have never been legalized. Same-sex marriage would have never come into a law. If the church would have just opened their mouth. It all boils down. They're fear fearful of the culture of this time than they are the living God. God forgive us for being silent. God forgive us for not speaking out. How about this? God forgive us for going our own ways. There's a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end result is death. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, oh, God, give us some believers and some leaders starting in this pulpit tonight. This preacher right here, and I'll publicly declare, God, forgive us for missing the mark. Amen. Hezra repented along with the people of Israel. He cried, he put his own self in it. God, help our leaders. God, help our congregations to repent before God and let us come and confess our deeds. And God, give us a revival of sanctification. Amen. People don't want to hear that word, but it's still, a, it's still biblical. How many know sanctification's biblical tonight? Amen. Many bought their curious arts books. Said, we're going to burn these things. I remember when I first got saved, let me tell you, I had any kind of music you'd want. I had the ACDC. Anybody remember Stone Cold Steve Austin? I had all of his shirts. I had the Undertaker shirts I, that had some pretty bad things on them. Amen. I had all the rock music. I had all the things. You, the music you, people would think was entertaining, but wasn't nothing more from the pits of hell. The night I got saved, I went to a revival 
where there was a burning. You know what I did? I ain't bragging but on myself, but I'm just telling you how the Lord showed me I didn't need these things. The things I thought I had hundreds of dollars into, maybe even over thousands of dollars into. I said, hey, these things ain't nothing because I got a de- dose of the Holy Ghost. Amen? I take, took them into a fire. We burnt them things. I'm telling you, I ain't looked back on not having ACDC or Motley Crue or any of this garbage. I, it got burnt into the pit <laughs> in that fire. Can I tell you, I didn't care how valuable what seemed so valuable, what I paid for it wasn't no, no value. When I got a hold of the Lord, amen, I found out what was valuable. I found found out uh, what was the most important thing in my life. Uh, can I tell you, some people need to burn the junk out of their life. Amen. Uh, we need to have a burning again. Uh, get the things out of your life uh, that don't need to be there tonight. My Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost. Get the garbage out. I'm going to jump some pews in a minute. Get ready to catch me, Junior and Norma Jean. My Lord, I feel it I don't want to jump them. My gosh, I got the feeling of the Holy Ghost tonight. Somebody better get ready to jump all the way to the back. Heather, you better be ready back there. I don't want to jump. I'm telling you, we better burn the garbage. We need to burn it. You need to take the things in your life that don't need to be there, and you need to burn it. You got some unforgiveness, you need to allow the Holy Ghost to burn it out of your heart tonight. You got some jealousy, you need to let the Holy Ghost burn it out of your heart tonight. You got some bitterness, you need to let the Holy Ghost burn it out of you tonight. We need a burn pit. Amen. We're going to do that one of these days. We're going to burn some stuff. Amen. Some of this stuff people bringing in the house ain't no better than what they brought that day. Did you hear me? Oh, that's black magic. Well, let me tell you what, what we're bringing in. We're bringing Harry Potter in. That ain't no different. Some of the music and entertainment ain't no different than that right there. Amen. A devil's a devil. Yeah, I know some take stronger holds, but a devil's still a devil. One purpose. I'm telling you, we need to have a burn. Some of you need to let the Holy Ghost burn some things out of your life. We need a revival of sanctification. We need to lay those things down that don't need to be there. Amen. Amen. I don't care how much they cost you. Sister Debbie said, a lot of people take it and sell it in a yard sale. Don't you put it in a yard sale. You put it in a burn pit. You don't want to give that devil to somebody else. I want to stop him dead in this track. I don't want to send him on down the road. You don't give that devil to somebody else. They probably already got enough of him anyway. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. But we need to have a burning. We need to allow the fire of the Holy Ghost to burn those things out of our life and sanctify us. Make us a vessel of honor. Amen? God wants to burn those things out of your life that don't need to be there. But you need to confess it before Him and say, here it is, Lord. Burn these things out of my life. I believe it was Jack Coe preached, God's going to burn you barley fields. Listen, he wants to burn the junk out of your life tonight. But I'm going to tell you right now, he ain't going to burn it out of your life if you want to keep it in your life. Amen. If you want rid of it, God will set it aflame. I'm telling you, people need to have a burning. Anybody want to have a burning tonight? Anybody want to get the junk out of their life that don't need to be there? You see, there's still a right and there's still a wrong. You see, I found out something. Anybody knows me knows I've always had, I like to I like to agitate. I like to have a good time. Don't get me wrong. Especially when that white stuff starts to falling. 
and it's coming. It's a coming. No, I used to think, oh, God's just wanting to take up my good times. I found out it wasn't that. I have a whole lot better time serving the Lord than I ever did serving the devil. And I ain't got no bondages to me. I ain't walking around with a lemon in my mouth. Amen. I'm walking around with a smile on my face because I've been set free. I've been set free by the blood of the Lamb. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Let me tell you, people that's on drugs, they're bound by sin tonight. People that's on alcohol is bound by alcohol tonight. Amen. I'm telling you tonight, God God wants to set you free and give you joy. He wants to have a burning in your life. He wants to loose you. You remember I preached it this morning. How he loosened, he told his disciples, go loosen that colt. This is part two of that. Loosen that colt. Too many people are tied at the hitching post. Bound by an evil taskmaster. And Jesus is saying, loose them and bring them to me because I got need of you. Amen. 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 I said, give the Lord praise in here tonight. I got to hurry. My Lord, I'm all over myself tonight. The only true valuable things is Jesus. See what they realized right there. And there are occultic ways. This wasn't real. It was, but there was a far greater power. Amen. The true power is the Holy Ghost. Simon the sorcerer, how many knew he knew he tried to buy the power of the Holy Ghost? You know he was bound by the powers of hell. He he was bound in witchcraft. But he recognized something when they were laying hands on him. He recognized a genuine power of the Holy Ghost. Can I tell you, it's time we get a hold of something valuable tonight. See, the things of this world don't mean anything. The things of this world don't mean anything. The true value is serving the Lord. That's what they was getting a hold of right here. The true value is not what I'm throwing away. Even though it was probably worth over $200,000 in 2003 at this time, you say, well, that's a lot of money. But not when you get a hold of the Lord, it ain't. That's just a little bit compared to what he's got in store for you. Amen. Anybody know what I'm saying? Forget this stuff. Forget this junk. Forget this garbage. And just say, I'm going to serve the Lord. Let him burn the things out of my life that don't need to be there. Amen. Let him burn the junk out. Let him have a burning in my life. Can somebody say? burn the things in my life out that don't need to be there burn those things out burn those things out burn those things out tonight it's time to get a develop a spiritual appetite and lay aside the things that hinder us in Hebrews 12 and 1 he said lay aside every weight and sin which so easily does beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us once again it's time for some Christians to have a bonfire amen it's time to have a bonfire some of the music needs to go some of the channels you watch need to be blocked out amen amen those things that cause bondages, get it out of your house. I remember, I'm going to tell my mama a little bit. My daddy, he liked to drink. Every time he'd drink, she'd make him, she'd pray, God make him sick. And guess what would happen? He would get sick. <laughs> he'd say, what are you praying on me? I'm telling you right there, she done me the same way to things I done, make him miserable, whatever. You see where I'm at tonight, don't you? Point I'm trying to make is, anything that causes bondages needs to go from your house. Amen? I'm going to tell you, but they'll get mad. I don't care if they get mad or get glad. Let it go. Amen? Kick the devil out. Amen? Amen? Some of you need to kick the devil out of your house. Amen. 
God help me if you're playing with a Ouija board. But a Ouija board, and if you're listening to some of these things, some of the things we got, entertainment, it needs to be burnt. Not only that, sin, not only just sins of the flesh, but sins of the heart. Amen, needs to go. I said I'm going to hit everybody. You may not have a big fox, a big giant, but there's many in here probably got some small foxes. And many times it ain't the big things that spoil the vine. It's the small foxes that spoil the vine. Amen? Amen? God told you to get rid of it once. He don't expect you to pick it back up. Amen? When he said it once, he don't need to say it again. Amen? That's what I tell somebody. God ain't changed his mind about certain things. He still means what he said, and he said what he meant. Amen? Amen? Y'all getting quiet on me. I'll get better here in a minute when I close out. I can hear you now. I wish you'd hurry up and let go, preacher. Give me a few more minutes. Anything that can lead you to a downward spiral needs to be burnt. Did you hear me? Anything that can lead you away from Christ needs to be burnt. Amen? Finally, here we go. Last point. We need a revival of the Word of God of growing. It didn't say the church grew. It said the Word of God grew. Amen? I guarantee you, if you get the Word of God growing, everything else will take effect. Amen? Everything we do must be judged by the Word of God. Amen? Now, here's your criteria. Anybody got a Bible in here tonight? Anybody got a Bible in their house? If you don't, let me know. We'll get you one. I'll put Caesar on the test right now getting you a Bible. If you don't have a Bible, we'll get you a Bible. Don't you go without a Bible. If you don't have a Bible, I'll have, I'll have Patty order you one. Amen? Listen. Here's your criteria. If he says abstain from all parts of all, from all appearances of evil, what, what does he mean? He means to stay away from it. He didn't say flirt with it. He said give no place to the devil. That means shut the door on the devil. Any of you ever wanted to shut the door in somebody's face? You remember how George Jefferson used to do it? Anybody remember Jefferson's? One of my favorites right there. Old George was. When they didn't want to see Willis or Bentley, you know what he done to them? He just slammed the door in their face, didn't he? Don't tell me you ain't wanting to do that to somebody. How many know we won't need to do that to the devil tonight? He, you can't help him from coming to your door, but you don't have to let him in. Slam the door in his face. I ain't letting you in. But too many people want to bring him in and they want to cozy up with him they want to show him everything valuable no wonder their house has been run by the devil no wonder the devil's overriding them you bring him in guess what he gonna start stealing amen he gonna start taking and he's gonna start killing and he gonna start destroying amen can I tell you when he shows up at your door can I bust your bubble a little bit? He ain't showing up with a little red pitchfork in a red suit and two little horns. Anybody know that? You know how he's going to show up? In sheep clothing and as an angel of light. Amen. You better judge it by the word of God. But I'll tell you, I got an ADT system to the, to the devil. It's the B-I-B-L-E. I got a protection. I don't dial 911. I dial J E S U S. Amen. I call on the name of the Lord tonight. Amen. Can I tell you, some of you need to let the word of God grow in your life. And you need to let the word of God begin to prevail in your life. We need a revival of the word of God among the house of God. Amen. We need to let the word of God grow in the church world again. 
I'm hard tonight, but I'm giving you what the Lord gave me tonight. Everyone's standing in here. How many need something burned out of their life tonight? Don't you hold back. You need it burnt. You need God to take it out. I want a revival. But for revival, you're going to have to have some things burnt. Amen. Who would say, Lord, burn some things out of my life? Where it's the sins of the flesh or the sin of the heart. I don't care what it is. If it needs to go, it needs to go tonight. God, like, like this thing, put this garbage in the trash and burn it. I want it out because it ain't valuable. I want it out of my life. I want the value, the true value of the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. Amen. I want the true value of the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. Amen. God, help us tonight. God, help us tonight, Lord, in Jesus' name.